been a month since I had my first major surgery and uh, quite a few have been asking what caused it, um, why it happened. So here I am recording my very first, sort of my very first uh, blog to sort of share what I went through from like the symptoms that I felt to figuring out what the root cause was, the surgical procedure itself, as well as the recovery. because I, it's really hard to sort of put things in order. So what I actually went through was called an endos endoscopic sinus surgery with a fistula repair on the upper right maxillary sinus. Actually, ang punot dulo nito really is I have terrible teeth. In terms of alignment, medyo sunki yung lower front teeth ko. And it's a very similar story in the upper, uh, in my upper jaw, both left and right. So all four of my wisdom teeth were impacted and I really needed to have them removed. Um, and the reason why it's called impacted is medyo mahirap siyang bunutin. But it can be done at uh, your dental clinic for as long as the dentist is able to do wisdom teeth surgery. Right, so the first step really is to do like a panoramic x-ray so that they can have a full view of your jaw. But before I talk about, you know, yung pagbunot ng wisdom teeth ko, let me jump to October 2018 when my sister, my mom, and myself went on a quick vacation to Taiwan for a couple of days. Um, I think it was around October 2018, so medyo, medyo malamig. And I suddenly um, developed like a weird smell in my right sinus. So nung una akala ko, it was probably because of the cold, the change in weather, Probably sinusitis, but again, I had very little knowledge at that time of what sinusitis was, right? It could also be, you know, I initially thought also, nabaka, it's just the smell of the food, right? Because there is such a thing, if you've ever been to Taiwan, as stinky tofu, right? So, medyo unpleasant yung smell niya. And my sister also experienced something similar. But, uh, medyo nagtaka na ako when I came home to Manila and I noticed that the smell was still there, right? So, fast forward to 2019 when I decided to go to different ENTs. Uh, to have myself checked and what they would do is they would just prescribe me you know uh, a round of medications so it would usually be antibiotics say maybe some anti-allergy meds because some thought it might be because of you know allergies again sinusitis so you know medicines like sinopret and even um, your nasal sprays which I um, which I did naman. I followed the doctor's orders I went through the, the medications but somehow it wouldn't really go away so I went through like your second your third your fourth your fifth opinion so my search for a solution was put on pause because of the pandemic. No December 2019, na yung upper right gum ko. Um, and then, I'm sorry, this is TMI, but there was a bit of pus or nana that was actually coming out now of my gums. So that's when I decided na parang, okay, um, January 2020, to actually have my, um, my wisdom teeth extracted, at least on the right side muna. Um, you can actually do both sides if you want, para isang, isang go na lang, but the dentist usually you know usually um recommends that you do one side first so you can still chew on one side and then once that's healed do the other side just in case all four are impacted like mine so for me i did this i did the right side january and then after six months i did my left side naman so nung july 2020 na natanggal na rin yung wisdom teeth ko dito right so when they actually extracted um the one on my right uh, both upper and lower, they note. I they noticed yeah, that there was an infection, so I did do you know your usual round of antibiotics, um, and then there was some pus nga, when they removed the tooth, and then a week after I decided to go back to my dentist because nga, I noticed my my the tooth next to my the my wisdom my well my former wisdom tooth um, was also me sensation eh. it wasn't it wasn't comfortable, so I had them remove that as well. So nung binunot din siya, meron din siyang pus or nana. But they didn't really say that it was an infection, but that they removed it um, and then let my gums heal. And that was the end of the story. And then I had this one removed nga in July. So I thought, you know, and that was, that was the end of it. Uh, but again, the, the smell on, my, uh, on the right side of my nose, uh, the post-nasal drip, by the way, which I forgot to mention. So it's that feeling that there's something dripping at the back of your throat and medyo... Um, it had a very unpleasant taste also, very similar to the smell, kumbaga. Uh, and I also noticed since, you know, during the pandemic, which is a span of over two years, I also noticed there was a fluid buildup here in my, the right sinus, kumbaga, the one year under my right eye. So there were times when I would lie down for, you know, shift from left to right, and then there would be like a feeling na gumagalaw yung fluid sa, sa chico, which is definitely not normal. So, you know, I revived my search 
for an EMT, uh, January 2023. So I ended up at a doctor that I saw previously, pre-pandemic. Um, he gave me a round of antibiotics twice. He actually did an endoscopy. This is the first time I ever did it, where he put a long tube up my nose just to see what the problem was. And he did saying that, uh, and he did confirm that there was, you know, some green pus in my nose. So that's hence the reason why he gave me antibiotics. Uh, he gave me two rounds because the first one didn't seem to work. But he did mention uh, that after the second round, if that didn't work, I would have to do a CT scan and maybe surgery would be involved. Okay, pero hindi na nakabalik sa kanya because my mom um, was also experiencing issues in her ear naman. Um, I think an imbalance of sorts. So she reached out to some of her uh, doctor's secretary friend. So they recommended uh, Dr. Ramon Lopa from Makati Medical Center. Um, and we decided to go see him. So mama na ako because, you know, I figured why not get another opinion. And then uh, with Doc Lopa, I, I told him the story of, you know, of um, the infection in my gums and then also in my nose. And he was saying that uh, normal sinusitis doesn't happen on just one side of your face. But sinusitis usually affects both I mean, you know, both nostrils or your entire nose, kumbaga. And the smell also was a bit a bit off-putting though. And then I shared with him the, the infected uh, wisdom tooth that I had some years back. And uh, he was the only one who was able to make that connection or really listen to me. And I think that's important when you find doctors, you know, that you find someone who actually listens to you when you share the symptoms or what you felt. So he was able to make that link between my gums and my nose or my sinus, right? So he did another endoscopy. Um, and then he said, you know what, um, you have to go see um, an orthodontist that he uh, usually works with, if that's okay with me. And I was like, sure, because uh, the dentist I would usually visit is a family dentist or a family friend, right? So I was very open to that, obviously. Um, he also recommended that I do a CT scan so you can see a better, have a better view of my sinuses. And you know, my CT scan confirmed that uh, the right side or my right sinus, uh, my maxillary sinus to be specific. So yeah, my right maxillary sinus was actually opaque. So the left side is clear and the right side is totally dark. So um, he was like, you know what, because the antibiotics didn't work and because you actually did your job and actually saw a lot of ENTs na before uh, and drank, you know, all the meds na I think surgery na yung kailangan mo, right? And he was actually saying how lucky I was because I've been nursing this infection for, I don't know, I don't know if it was the Taiwan um, thing that started it all in 2018 or whether it was my gum infection in 2019, but the, the fact that I've been nursing this infection for so long, I'm actually very lucky to, you know, have not had it evolved into something like meningitis or something that, in, you know, infected my brain. So yun nga, um, fast forward, I had to schedule my surgery for March 7. Uh, I had to do um, a lot of things before that, a lot of prep, of course. I had to, you know, secure, um, you know, clearance from a cardiologist, do an ECG, do all the blood tests, just, just to make sure that my body uh, would be able to handle the surgery. Um, kasi general anesthesia siya. And then uh, this was my first time to actually handle um, hospital admissions for planned surgery. I did all the preps for about a few weeks before that. I also had to take antibiotics. I checked myself in the night before my surgery, March 6. So I check in around 7 p.m., 8 p.m. I ate a lot of good food uh, days leading up to my surgery because my doctors did give me a heads up that I would be on a liquid diet for two weeks. Aside from the surgery itself, the recovery was also something I was very anxious about. So um, you know, I checked in, I was by myself actually because my mom couldn't really stay over because she's a senior. And um, I had my sister, you know, uh, planned her leaves post-surgery, which is when I would need her more. Right? So the night before, um, I really couldn't sleep. There were a lot of doctors coming in and out doing, you know, routine um, checkups. They were asking me the usual questions. Um, why did I, how did I discover my symptoms, etc., etc. Um, and then uh, I ate my last meal. I had my last sip of water before 1 a.m. Because apparently you cannot eat eight hours before your surgery. Um, and then sinaksakan na ako na IV noon, so they put in the IV and the dextrose at around 1 a.m. I couldn't sleep, I was very anxious, obviously, praying a lot. Siguro, I only had three hours of sleep the night before, so I slept at 2, woke up at 5. My mom arrived mga 6.30, um, and then they wheeled me out of there um, to the operating room around 7.30. My surgery was scheduled at 9, so I was in the pre-op pre pre-operation room for around an hour or so and then they brought me in I didn't have a watch so I was 
probably estimating around nine or a little past nine. Uh, what I remember is they had me move from my, my bed to the operating table or the operating bed. My anesthesiologist talked to me um, and then she, um, she injected something in my IV, which I can only assume is the general anesthesia. I felt woozy immediately after. It's like how you see it in movies, you know, when people are drunk or like they're gonna pass out soon, gonna new feeling. Um, and then she just said good night. I was expecting her to ask me to count backwards from like 10, but that didn't happen. I just passed out. Um, thankfully, I didn't wake up in the operating room. The next thing, uh, the next time I opened my eyes was probably in the post op na. So it was very woozy. The procedure was done. Um, it was roughly around about 1 p.m. So if I came in there around 9, uh, 1, 8, 1 p.m. na hong halos nagising. So around three to four hours in procedure ko. Uh, it was actually two things, right? So I had an ENT, uh, ENT work on my nose. So they flushed out the infection. They probably used around one liter of water. At least that's what my doctor said, just to flush out the infection. And then my orthodontist worked on my gums. So aside from, you know, opening my gums on the right and draining it of the infection, um, on the left side, may mga binunot din siyang teeth just to make sure that whatever happened here does not recur on the left, which I was totally fine with it. I barely have teeth anymore, guys. It's crazy. So after they observed me in the post-op room, just to make sure there were no major side effects, um, they moved me back to my room. I couldn't eat parin till probably around 10 p.m. So halos buong araw ng March 7, hindi ako makain. Um, surprisingly, I, I felt okay the day of my surgery. My, my sister came over no gabi. She bought me a shake that I could have for dinner. I guess it was because I had very heavy pain medication that was going straight into my blood so I didn't feel any pain at all um, I could actually ha I could have gone home I could have been discharged no Wednesday which is the day after but I noticed that there was some blood coming out of my nose um, which was normal um, it wasn't your pure sticky blood it was actually I guess um, remnants because they did flush my nose with water right so chances are may mga lumalabas pa rin na water so they said it was normal, um, as long as it wasn't profuse bleeding and just a bit of blood every now and then. But because I was just wanted to be sure, I stayed over another night, which was actually a good idea because um, no gabi no Wednesday, I actually sort of developed a fever. It was a 38 degree fever. And then yun nga, naubos na yung um, IV medication or my pain meds. They just used it up. There was no order to add any more. And then my, my dextrose was running out also. They just used up the bag. So I was pretty much on no medication at all. They did not order for any um, uh, oral pain meds or oral anti-inflammatory meds. I was just, my face was all swollen, by the way. So um, yun, the, the night of Wednesday, the day after, I was just feeling like I could really feel my face was burning up. Ninalamig yung pa ako. Um, you could really feel the, the pain in my, in my gums where everything happened, kumikirot talaga siya, I couldn't sleep, uh, it took a while for the nurses to bring me antibiotics or analgesics, uh, again, no pain meds, and then because I wasn't eating anything, I have really bad hyperacidity, so my heartburn was also not helping, so sabay sabay lahat yung nangyayari, um, and my sister couldn't sleep, she was actually giving me um, a cold sponge bath to help, you know, cool down the fever. Uh, so, yun nga, when my fever broke, uh, I decided to Check out na on Thursday. But in terms of the expenses, uh, my HMO actually covered around 140 plus thousand, 145,000. And then I had to pay an additional 40,000 that I just charged to my card. And then my doctor's professional fees were actually separate because they were not covered by my HMO. So I paid 145,000 for both my um, ENT and my orthodontist. Um, and then an additional 15,000 pa for. Um, for this dental, you know, tool or some dental equipment that they use during the surgery. So, medyo mahal siya, guys. Uh, mahirap magkasakit. <laughs> so, but it's also good to be very proactive about it. If you feel something, definitely go see your doctor before it gets a lot worse. Wag niyo paabutin ang surgery, for sure yan. So, ayun, I got home uh, Thursday, was able to recover at home. I actually stocked up, since I was on liquid diet for two weeks, we stocked up on a lot of chicken broth and some chicken soup. Uh, I also bought mga smoothie options. I mean, I have a blender at home. We actually got a new one in time for my surgery. Um, I also got a lot of yogurt. Uh, we also got some applesauce, which I wasn't able to eat. Um, snack packs. 
and a, pr a protein shake. So I was thankfully able to live off those. I was on antibiotics for two weeks ulit. Uh, yung papalapot ulit ng dugo for a good week or so. They also gave me S omeprazole, which helped regulate my um, hyperacidity. So I think I survived the liquid diet because I was also on that medication. Um, and then initially I had uh, yung sea salt na spray, which I had to do for a week just to clean the right side of my nose. Um, and then when I went back to my doctor, I, I would have to go to my ENT weekly for around three weeks. Uh, just so he could check my nose, check if it was healing okay. Um, he switched me to uh, yung flow sign saline <laughs> rinse that you can use so that you can easily buy at um, at your drugstore. So I mean, even if you don't have a sinus problem, it's a very good way to cleanse your sinuses. Also, it's a very healthy practice, by the way. So you don't have to have sinusitis to use flow sinus. Just to let you guys know. Um, and then aside from that, some of the instructions he gave me was bawal akong magbend because nga yung ilong ko baka dumugo. And I was also not allowed to do anything strenuous, so any heavy lifting, which is normal naman for any surgery. So anyway, fast forward, I would, you know, do a weekly checkup uh, with my ENT. The first time I went back to him, which was a week after my surgery, I think it was March 14, medyo masakit siya because he had to clean out my nose. Right, because I was only doing a saline spray upwards, but I wasn't touching my nose at all. Because it's fresh, pa. So there was a lot of dried blood. So he, if you if you are uncomfortable with the COVID swab, this was what I, I can't even describe it. Really, really painful. So they would use a lot of metal instruments. He used a forceps, he used a suction to clean my nose, and he would go really deep. Like if you swab up until here lang, it's malalim siya kasi obviously your sinus going affected. So you just had to check for adhesions to make sure that you know your mga sugat ko was healing okay. But yung he had to clean it out. So I remember just closing my eyes because I didn't want to have to look at the instruments. And then I was just gripping my hand really tight because it's sakit, you know, and I didn't want to flinch, diba? So habang ginagawa niya sa ilu ko, tumutulol ng iluha ko dito. And then my doctor said that was really really strong, but I was crying on the side. They actually, by the way, um, cultured the bacteria or the infection that they found from my nose because my doctor was very curious as to why resistant she to antibiotics. Because I did do a lot of antibiotics over the last three, four years, right? So he cultured it and after two weeks, which is medyo matagal, right? But uh, after two weeks, they came back with the results. Um, and by the way, culturing bacteria is not cheap. They charge around 28000 just to test for it, but I was I was okay with it because I really wanted to know what was causing you know my problems. So it was actually three types of bacteria that they found in my sinus. Um, I wrote it down. That's really hard to pronounce. It's Staphylococcus hominis, Serratia marcescens, and Streptococcus anginosus. So they were all resistant to amoxicillin or coamoxicla, which I was drinking. Okay, it lasted for as long as it did. Or it probably started out as just one type of bacteria and I probably inhaled the others. The, the, the weekly checkups was he was just making sure that it didn't recur. So far, so good. Wala daw siyang nakikita in my sinuses, um, which is a good thing. So I was on a soft diet for two weeks. Um, I actually lost three kilos, by the way. Pero I was also eating a lot of ice cream. And then, and you know, just to share, I was actually dreading it because I thought I'd be masungit or hangry because I usually am when I nalipasan ako ng gutom and my sister can attest to that. But surprisingly, I wasn't. I was actually pleasant. And I think um, working from home really helped me in terms of recovery. Like, it, I couldn't imagine having to go to work every day and be exposed to the elements. The humidity, yung init, and then just being around a lot of people. Um, would have probably made it harder for me, but because I work from home, I think I was able to handle it a lot better. And you know, after two weeks, they moved me to a soft diet, and I was so happy because I was able to eat spam. My dream meal was actually spam eggs and tres leches from M Bakery, which I actually was able to get. And then a week after, I moved to um, regular food. Nah, and they removed my stitches. So I've graduated from weekly visits to my ENT and dentist to visits every three weeks. So far, you know, my doctor says, looks good. He says that I'm very lucky and buti na lang naagapan and I'm so happy to have found him. If you are curious as to who my doctor is, my ENT is Dr. Ramon Lopa. You can find him at Makati Medical Center. Um, if you send me a message, I can probably give you the number to his secretary in case you guys want to have your noses checked. 
ENT, so ears, nose, throat, right? And then for my orthodontist, um, there I worked with actually two. So you have Dr. Uh, Dominic Sevilla and also Dr. Pangan. Uh, they're both located at the Makati Medical Plaza, which is right across Makati Med. They're actually pretty good. They have a lot of gadgets um, and they, 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 know, they know their stuff. So if you want to have your teeth checked, I highly recommend them also. So ayun lang, I hope that um, this was educational for you in case you experience any similar symptoms, then I suggest you go have yourself checked. If you have any further questions, you can drop them in the comments or send me you know, some, uh, you know, a DM on my socials on Instagram. I'm at Alex Hosts. On Twitter, it's Alex947. And of course, on my Facebook page, it's DJ Alex947. All right, so thanks for listening.